very warm welcome everybody you know as i watch the people pouring in in the last 30 seconds to the zoom meeting i'm thinking we're going to have trouble aren't we when we actually get back to physical meetings in church we're all going to have to do things a quarter of an hour earlier at least but welcome wherever you are wherever you're watching from whenever you're watching we're still in the season of Epiphany, and Epiphany, as uh, you, you may know, uh, means the, the revealing of Jesus. It's about the revealing of Jesus to the world. But we also have to see it. We have to be alert. We have to be looking. So we'll bear that thought in our heads as we go through the service this morning. We're going to start with a coming together song, Come People of the Risen King. beginning and our end. Bring us with the whole creation to your glory, hidden through past ages and made known in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Jesus said one of the greatest commandments was to love God, but is our love of him firm in our lives or is it more like a morning mist that disappears like the slush did the other day? Let's come to him relying on his promise to forgive what we have done wrong and trusting in his promise of forgiveness using the words on the screen. Lord our God, in our sin we have avoided your call. Our love for you is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Have mercy on us. Deliver us from judgment, bind up our wounds and revive us in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God is so wonderfully faithful when he promises to forgive we can trust him we're going to use a song of his goodness now uh, brought to us from the worship band of holy trinity claygate again goodness of god <laughs>
with me on a time machine now to a telegraph station somewhere out in the west of America many years ago. How observant are you? What is going on here? See if you can tell as we watch this little video. <laughs> Hello, my name is John. I'm here for the Telegraph job. Okay, John, we'll just uh, have a seat right here. When we're ready to interview, we'll uh, call you back through this door, okay? Okay, thank you. Telegraph job? Yes, I am. Okay, and what is your name, sir? My name is Thomas. All right, Thomas. We'll just have a seat right here. When we're ready to interview, we'll call you back through this door. Okay, thank you. Uh, you're welcome. But don't let him fool you. I've been here for over 30 minutes already. Thank you, sir, but it appears the job's been filled. What? Who got the job? Oh, the young man who was just in here, uh, Thomas. Well, wait a minute, I was here before him. How is it fair that he got hired for the job and I wasn't even called in for an interview? Oh, we did call both of you back there for an interview. He was just the only one who was paying attention. Sometimes picking things up isn't a case of extraordinary events. It's what we can see in ordinary events. Let's try and open our minds to God. Let's try and hear him as Peter brings us our reading today. The reading is taken from the first chapter of the Gospel according to St. John, starting at the 43rd verse. The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, Follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael and told him, We have found the one Moses wrote about in the law, and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth? Can anything good come from there? Nathaniel asked. Come and see, said Philip. When Jesus saw Nathaniel approaching, he said of him, Here truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. How do you know me? Nathaniel asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. Jesus said, 
You believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree. You will see greater things than that. He then added, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. When my brother and I were still at school, um, we spent a couple of occasions when we lived in Australia for several weeks at a time. Uh, because my father was a BOAC captain and the airline would station crews out the other side of the world to make the rosters easier. And I always thought it was a bit of a swizz that we had to take schoolwork with us and do it while we were out there. But we did get time to do various fun things as well in the beaches and, and the rock pools and the rivers and in the local town. And we spent a fair bit of time fishing off the end of Manly Wharf, where the ferries came and went. Um, now this wasn't complicated. We didn't have real, uh, we didn't have uh, uh, up-to-date reels and rods and stuff like that. We just had baited hooks which we slung a long line over the sides and held them with a finger ready to detect the nibbles. And we threw pretty much all the fish back to live another day. But you could never quite tell what sort of fish you were actually going to catch. We got lots of little black and yellow ones called trumpeters. There were other sorts of well, and once my brother caught a fairly ugly looking blowfish. And sometimes you could tell from the vibrations on the line as the fish nibbled the bait sort of um, strength it was going to be. There were some pretty hard and big ones, but the important thing was to keep alert and see what you came up with. Now I think Nathaniel in our reading had been doing something a bit like that. He hadn't quite known what he was going to come up with, but he had been spending time on the alert for whatever God was going to tell him. And that's the way I find it easiest to understand the rather puzzling conversation that he had with Jesus. Let's wind back a little bit. Just a few days earlier before our passage, John the Baptist has publicly endorsed Jesus. He said, behold the Lamb of God and pointed him out to his disciples. He even says, he was before me, which is a bit odd when you think about it, because John was actually six months older than Jesus. So hearing this, two of John's disciples have gone and attached themselves to Jesus for a day. They spent time with him, they've listened to him, and they're realizing why John pointed him out. One of those disciples was Andrew, and we think the other one was probably uh, John, the, the son of Zebedee. Anyway, Andrew goes and fetches his brother Simon, and Jesus is just beginning to gather a little band of followers. And probably those first guys already knew each other. Of course, Andrew and Simon would have done, but John was a fellow fisherman from the same town. And they might not have known Jesus before, because Nazareth, which is, I mean, there's Nazareth. Nazareth was at least 20 miles from the fishing communities around Lake Galilee. But this carpenter's son is not going to stay unknown. Now, the standard pattern, if you wanted to follow a rabbi's teaching, was to seek them out, spend a lot of time with them, show them um, your intellect and find out if they were willing to have you. But now Jesus does something completely different. He goes and finds Philip, who is possibly a friend of Andrew and Peter, and Jesus asks Philip to follow him. And that was odd. There was no approaching of a respected teacher by Philip for approval. There was no assessment of whether uh, he was brainy. 
simply the teacher coming to him and saying, follow me. And that was a pattern which Jesus would repeat over and over again. He didn't have a lengthy trial period to see if his disciples were good enough. He just saw human beings with the potential to know him and ask them to follow him, regardless of status, regardless of ability, regardless of intellect. He approaches you and me in the same way. If we are Christians, it's not because we are particularly brainy or clever or good or whatever. It is because the master has looked at us and seen in us the potential to know him. Don't think that you don't have any. So back to Philip, who starts a pattern that was going to be seen many times. He finds a friend and says, come and look at what I found. Now, why do we Brits find that so hard? It's probably because in our heads, we think we're telling people to conform and, and you know, we're asking them to obey social norms or whatever. Christianity has been the cultural background here for something like 1400 years. But what we are really doing is sh sharing a discovery. We're saying, this is real. So Philip goes and finds Nathaniel and says, we found the Messiah, effectively. And Nathaniel is skeptical. He says, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Like, clearly, he doesn't rate the place. You, you could have some fun, couldn't you, thinking what would be the English equivalent of that? Can anything good come out of Milton Keynes? Well, actually, it can. If you've been looking at the news, you can see stories about these little robots they've got delivering things round about the pavements. Little people are getting quite fond of them. Can anything good? come out of Bogner? Can anything good come out of Slough? John Betjeman wouldn't have thought so. Grudgingly, Nathaniel comes and agrees to meet Jesus. And Jesus knocks him back with his first comment. Here is an Israelite with no deceit. Now, I don't think Jesus meant that all Israelites were devious. But this but he meant that this was something that mattered to Nathaniel. And maybe Nathaniel had been reading the story of uh, Israel's founding father, Jacob, who'd cheated his brother and deceived his father and then in turn was double-crossed by his uncle. So Nathaniel says, how do you know me? It's a reasonable question. And Jesus tells him that he saw him under a fig tree. Now, why is that like a lightning bolt for Nathaniel? But try this as a possible theory. Nathaniel had been reflecting deeply on scripture, trying to understand how God's purposes can be channeled through imperfect and deceitful human beings like Jacob. And he might have been praying to understand more about this. And now he's suddenly confronted with a man who seems to know exactly what he was thinking and exactly why he was puzzled. And he, Nathaniel probably knew his Bible very well. He might have thought of Psalm 139. Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know me when I sit down and when I rise up, you discern my thoughts from far away. That is the prerogative of God, and here he was faced with it in a human being. And in Nathaniel's head, it all comes together. There is a deep connection between God in heaven and this man on earth that he has never seen in anyone else. Nathaniel has found his Messiah. And Jesus tells him, you will see heaven open 
and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. And that is an image straight out of the story of Jacob. It's when he dreamt about a ladder reaching up to heaven. And if Jacob was the story that Nathaniel was thinking about, surely that was the clincher. But for that all to happen, Nathaniel had to sit down with an open heart and an open mind and seek God. And he might not have known what he was going to come up with, just as I didn't know what I was going to get when I dangled my line over the end of the jetty looking for fish. But our part is to be ready for what God gives. It is easy to sit back and tune God out and we can fume like the man in the telegraph station waiting for a word, waiting for God to say something. But we can look for God's activity in what is going on around us, in what we're ready to discern with our minds. We can listen for his word in our hearts. And perhaps we will find that suddenly it makes sense. Perhaps we'll find that he's calling us inside for a job. Let's pray. In our current situation, we might want to just crouch down and wait for things to pass. But do we believe that God is saying nothing at such a time like this? He might be telling us what good can be done in it or after it. He might be wanting us to understand how we can act right in bad situations. Lord, open our ears to what you're saying. May we form the habit of listening and may we learn to look for you. Amen. Someone like Nathaniel was watching and waiting for the Messiah. And as we sing this next song, or listen to it in your hearts, it's a song of expectation. And let's remember we can invite God's activity by expecting him to work. Come thou long expected Jesus.
Let us pray. As the world continues to be rocked by the COVID-19 illness, we thank you, Lord God, for the successful development of several different vaccines and for the good start that has been made in the UK and other countries in administering the vaccine to the most vulnerable. We pray that the manufacturers of these vaccines would be able to match the supply with the demand and that there would be equity in the distribution of the vaccine worldwide. As the UK continues in lockdown, we pray for wisdom and guidance for our politicians and scientific advisors. We also pray for continuing good adherence to the regulations and that each person would have a strong sense of responsibility and consideration for others, whatever their perception of the risks to themselves. May we all be willing to make small sacrifices for the good of the many whose lives are deeply affected by this pandemic. As we see on our TV screens, the exhausted medical personnel who are working so hard and coping against all the odds with the seemingly endless tide of new admissions, we pray that you would strengthen them. Give them the ability to make good decisions even when they feel their strength has run dry. And at the end of their shifts, give them good rest, good support, and restorative sleep. Lord, we pray for patience and strength for all parents who are in the really difficult position of having to work themselves whilst at the same time having to homeschool their children. Give parents and children alike the concentration they need for their work and the ability to choose their priorities wisely. Following the publication this week of figures showing a sharp increase during the months of lockdown in cases of serious harm to children at the hands of those who should care for them. We especially pray for those living in unsuitable accommodation and those where family relationships are becoming impossibly strained due to continued close contact with no respite. While schools are closed, and social distancing makes visiting at risk families difficult, may other ways be found for vulnerable children and adults to be identified and brought to a place of safety. Lord, both in our own country and globally, we see the relentlessly increasing gulf between the rich and the poor. We lift up to you those in this country who feel desperate because they cannot provide for themselves and their families. Please open the eyes of politicians and give them and local councillors fresh ideas and a renewed determination to rebuild communities which are broken through neglect and lack of investment. Lord Jesus, you sided with the poor. Kindle in us your anger at injustice. Sweep away our indifference and give us your compassion. Inspire us with new ideas of ways to help in what often seems like hopeless situations. Lord, we pray for all those who are struggling to adapt to the new rules governing European trade after Brexit. Amidst all the confusion and the proliferation of new paperwork, may there be calm and patience and a willingness to learn new ways of doing things. Where there are delays and bottlenecks at ports and other entry points, would you help officials to work efficiently to clear the backlog so that normal free flow of haulage traffic can be resumed? And we also pray that government departments would be responsive and act swiftly where there is a need for more changes to the new official documentation. We turn our thoughts to the United States and we pray for a peaceful transfer of the presidency and for a real period now of healing and unification. We pray that there will be a return to respect 
tolerance and trust between people who hold opposing political opinions. Help the leaders from both parties to demonstrate integrity and grace and to speak out against violence and hatred. God of comfort, we bring to you all those who are struggling today with physical, mental or emotional difficulties. Would you bring them healing, wholeness and comfort and a real deeply felt knowledge of your presence with them. And now we're going to say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today your daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Our final hymn is another of those wonderful pieces that has been put together in lockdown in individual pieces, people's homes and then brought together by technology. And I was going to ask Joel to edit out the bit at the beginning where the lady explains uh, what's going on. But then I thought, no, we'll, we'll leave that in. This is a community in Devon explaining why they brought this hymn together and the hope it gives. Uh, as we sing in Christ alone. I'm sure we've all been inspired by the many collaborative videos of singers working together during this lockdown time. We decided here in Bobby that we would like to have a go at a collaborative hymn. So we've put together Voices of Bobby Valley singing a very famous and well-loved hymn in Christ alone. This hymn conveys the fact that even in these times of fear and darkness, he is our light, our strength, and our song. We've welcomed people of all ages and abilities to join this choir and they've worked very hard and so have the tech team to put this hymn together for you and we hope you enjoy it. This cornerstone, this solid ground And through the thesis drought and storm What heights of love, what depths of peace When fears are still, when striving cease My comforter
stand in the power of Christ now and always and may the blessing of God Almighty Father Son and Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.